Um, in the Old Testament, they would not say the word God. Now, we say God all the time, and occasionally we attach things to that that aren't very helpful um, in times of great trial and sorrow. They never would say it. And so when he says, I am who I am, he, God isn't saying the word God. No one does. No one even whispers God. And so when Jesus says, I am, just like it's in that, He's suggesting that he is God. So soldiers, if we back up one, are going to get a man, Jesus of Nazareth, a man, a human, who claims to be a king. And when they get there and they say, all right, who are you? And he says, I am. Ooh, this, I, didn't, I didn't realize it was this, because we're talking about God now. Okay, they fall to the ground. They don't have anything to do with it. Well, Peter, Jesus' disciple, says, um, I'm going to take matters into my own hands. We've seen him do this before, at least three times. Um, now, I'm guessing women haven't experienced this, but um, many men, if you've had a group of friends in your life, there was one in the group that wanted to fight. <laughs> he was looking for it. If you go out, um, he, one of my favorite radio shows calls it, likes to fight guy. He's... Uh, you know, there's different ones in your group. There's the organizer, there's the comedian, there's the complainer, and there's the provoker. You know, let, let, let's fight. And Peter takes out his sword, slices off the ear of one of the people. Because that'll help. Right? You see all the other soldiers? He says, I'm going to spare Jesus this pain because I didn't realize it was going down like this, because I didn't listen when Jesus was telling me that it was. And so now I'm going to react with violence, and I'm going to meet violence with violence. Which, um, in, in baseball season, is coming. I use um, baseball as to help me with my college football addiction, so I don't think about it 24-7. Um, one of the great things about baseball, some people say one of the terrible things about baseball, is instant justice. If a pitcher feels that the, the hitter that hit a home run off of him stayed in the box too long and watched that home run a little bit too long, rather than just going around the bases, what will he do to the next batter? Ear hole. <laughs> that batter didn't do anything. Um, but the previous batter... Uh, he disrespected him as who perceives the pitcher. You know, I, I'm the best judge of who disrespected me because I've got the best uh, sense of um, uh, whatever, the whole world. Well, he hit the guy in the ear hole, the next guy. Well, what do you think is going to happen in the next half inning? Well, you hit my guy in the ear hole. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to hit your guy in the ear hole. When that happens, the next thing, the next baseball from either side that goes anywhere near a batter, both teams do what? It's time to go. Funny thing is, no baseball player wants to fight. Maybe one of them. And so the teams just go out there and just kind of <laughs> stand, you know, hold me back. <laughs> it's kind of fun. But, you know, the, the instant... Um, uh, desire for justice leads the other side to want justice. Well, if you want justice, well, I'm getting justice right back. And so Simon Peter potentially is starting that pattern of you know, taking that guy's ear off and violence is going to come our way. Jesus says, don't do that. He probably said it in a stronger way than that and with a stronger tone. Um, so just because you've been disrespected, just because you've been threatened, just because you perceived injustice, doesn't mean that you use violence. Jesus said to him, put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. So you want the sword? You're going to die by it. I never considered that that's where that came from. Um, if, if you want to use it, that's the way you're going to go. If you want to use peace, perhaps we can negotiate peace. Now, we've said before that different Gospels you know, tell a different story. Just as four people at an event would tell it in a slightly different way. 
We read John. If you look at Matthew, Jesus says, Do not think for a minute that I'm not going to drink this cup my Father gave me. Do not think for a minute that I'm not ready for this. I promise you don't have to spare me from this human being. I'm ready. And in Luke, he goes even a step further and reaches down and heals the ear of the servant. He heals the ear of the person coming to take him to prison and his violent death. Now that's the opposite of retaliation. That's using peace to get his point across. Now if you look around, this is, this is a teacher. In this moment, just prior to this text, Jesus was praying in this same garden. And he said to his disciples, look, I need you to stand guard for me while I pray. His disciples fell asleep. In the middle of the night, he's exhausted, no telling what they've been doing, they fall asleep. He comes back from the prayer and he says, what are you doing? You need, I need you to wake up and protect me. He goes back to prayer. What do they do? Fall asleep. Another disciple, who's been following this whole time, leads the posse to him that's going to take him. And finally, one other disciple cuts the ear off of another man. You think if he's a teacher, he's thinking, oh, wow. I haven't done a great job here, have I? But he knows how frail human beings are. He knows how frail we are. And so he uses this last moment when they're all together. The disciples and Jesus will never be together again after this. He's also got Roman soldiers around. A ton of people that are, um, uh, you know, I always say to you, ABC, always be closing. A ton of people that are listening to what Jesus is saying. He says, I'm here, and I'm ready for you. I'm not going to use violence. I'm going to use peace till my very last breath. Now, Jesus steps forward to meet them completely without violence. And somehow, he maintains authority in a situation that seems to be spiraling dangerously out of control. Jesus, in this unbelievably spiraling out of control situation, is completely in control and says, it's all about me exuding this peace. Now, things will be much simpler in your life this week, without question. But certain things will trigger your desire for some sort of violence, whether it be mild or harsh, whether it be verbal or physical. Consider the model of our Lord in a desperate, desperate time. Now, if we're trying to get better as we go towards Easter, if Lent is a season of trying to get um, better in the way that we act, in the way that we behave, in the way that we talk, think about peace. I think you've got to skip two and we'll be to our step two. Two slides, and then we'll be on our step two. Three slides. Let's read this together. We will follow our Savior's call for peace. We will offer ourselves wholeheartedly to our God and to others. What's the difference there? We're not defending God with our anger. We're offering God our peace. It's pretty much the total opposite. How can we offer our peace to others and to our God? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.